Hello, Victor Kalamba. How are we all doing today? Welcome to our Sunday service. Our hope and our prayer is that wherever you are right now, in whatever season of your life you find yourself in as you are hearing this message, our hope is that you are experiencing the grace of God that overabounds and overflows in our lives. Our prayer is that you are really experiencing the love and mercies of God in this season of your life. My name is Miko Chenza and I will be delivering the word that God has for us today as we continue on with our series, The Gospel Explained. We will be reading our text for today from Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and uh, we will be reading this one verse and we're going to unpack it from there, okay? Why don't you read with me Romans chapter 5 verse 1. It says here, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's just open with a word of prayer. Father, we praise you. We worship you. Thank you for we can freely approach your throne. This is but by your grace and by your love for us. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for what you have done on the cross 2,000 years ago. Now we have the right standing with God. Now we can freely know about who you really are and what you have done for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are leading us into all truth today. Thank you for the word that we are about to really study in your scripture will really be like a seed that will be planted in our hearts, buried, and will bear fruit at the right season and at the right time. Thank you, God, for you will transform us today. You will change us as we approach your word today. Salamat, Panginoon, for you have something to say to each and every one of us that is listening right now. Salamat, Panginoon. We honor you. We worship you. We love you, God. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our topic for today is about peace with God. Let me make that distinction first that we are not talking about the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Neither will we be talking about the peace in God which comes from His presence. Rather, we will be talking about the peace that we now have with God. Peace with God. Okay? It is important to note that before we have come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, before we have received Him, we were considered as enemies of God, subject to His punishment, subject to His wrath, and really are wicked in our own state to be called enemies of God. But because of the justifying work of Jesus Christ on the cross, because of the blood that He shed, because of His redeeming work and sacrifice, we now stand righteous, we now stand holy, and this is what we will be talking about, what this peace with God entails in our lives as we walk in Him. Romans chapter 5, the text that we have just read, began by affirming our standing before God in light of Jesus Christ. That we, now that we have put our faith in Christ, we are declared righteous by God and we have peace with Him once for all. Okay? To understand the concept of peace even further, do you remember the last time that you were in conflict with someone? Perhaps meron kang na-offend or may naka-offend sa'yo? May nagawa ka ng mali or may nakagawa ng mali sa'yo? How was it? Do you remember the feeling? Was it comfortable talking to this person during the conflict? During that time that you're not in the right relationship with him or her? Was it easy for you to think good and well about the motives and actions of this person? Is it easy to believe that this person has your best interests in mind? Is it relaxing for you to be in the presence of this person? 
Remembering those times of conflict may have made you remember the feeling or naalala mo bigla yung mga dati mong kaaway, naalala mo yung mga taong, ay hindi pa pala kami okay ng tao na yon. But also, remember the feeling of forgiving someone, of being forgiven by that person that you have done something wrong to, and having your relationship being reconciled. Yung time na nagkais kayo. Remember also that feeling. Okay? Isn't it great? Did it remove a big burden that you are carrying in your heart? Did it remove any discomfort that comes from interacting with this person? Did it make it more relaxing or more easy for you to be around the presence of this person now that your relationship has been restored? This is the picture of the peace that we now have with God. And we are going to unpack that concept even further today in our message. And before we just do all of these things, let me just make a disclaimer that the peace with God that we are talking about today is not a subjective feeling. It's not something that just fills our hearts. It's not something that we feel right there and then. Rather, it is an objective reality. It's an objective truth that came along with what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Whether you are feeling that you are at peace with God today, or you are not feeling it at all, if you are in Christ, the fact remains that you have peace with God. Okay? So today, you may have been feeling a sense of guilt and condemnation. You may be feeling far away from God. Whatever you are feeling, if you are in Christ, the fact remains that you have peace with God. Okay? I pray that after hearing this message today, we would be able to grasp the fullness of the peace we now have with God and all that it implies to our lives right now. But not only that, I pray that we would be able to get a deep sense of appreciation of how this peace came to be through the life of Jesus Christ and what He has done for us. Okay? Let's unpack this verse that we have just read from Romans chapter 5 and we will read the verses that follow. Okay? Let us read verse 2. Sabi don. Through Him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Having peace with God gives us eternal security. Yung pong tinutukoy doon na the grace in which we stand, if you are in Christ, that is our standing right now. That is the believer's standing, the blessing of justification. Okay? The moment that you have received Christ as your Lord and Savior, your eternal destination has already been secured. Your life after this life here on earth is already secured in Christ. Okay? And Paul said, sabi ni Paul, nothing can separate us from this love. Nothing can separate us from this mercy that Christ has shown us. And we remember that if it is not through our good works, if it's not through what we have done, that we have received this justification, it is also not through our falling short that we can disqualify ourselves from this position. I pray that we will find peace and assurance in knowing that this peace with God, this eternal security that came along with it, has nothing to do with what we do at all. It is all about what Jesus Christ has done for us. Continuing on with the reading, it says here, And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. I remember when I was a child, and uh, my dad was a jeepney driver back then. Naalala ko po, gabi-gabi ko pong iniintay yung tatay ko para makauwi galing sa biyahe niya. Bonus na lang pag may dalang pasalubong, pero yung thought pa lang na nakauwi siya, na lagi naman siya nakakauwi galing sa biyahe niya, talagang it gives you joy knowing that the person you waited for, what you waited for, finally came. And I believe having peace with God gives us that same kind of anticipation because having peace with God gives us eternal hope. Ano po yung eternal hope natin? It is the hope of the glory of God. It is the hope that Jesus Christ would come back again one day and we will be judged. We will be 
judged according to what He has done on the cross, what will happen is we will be glorified. We will be perfected. This is the hope that results in joy. Okay? And knowing that we are in Christ, if we have put our faith in Jesus, we will be a part of that. We will be included. That's why this is a hope that we can all await for now that we have peace with God. Continuing on to verse 3, sabi dito, Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings. Okay? Not only do we have security, eternal security, but even as we go through challenges in life and suffering, having peace with God gives us internal security. What does that mean? The people of God not only rejoices in the future glory that is to come, but also in the present trials and sufferings, the present circumstances that we are in, whether good or bad, not because it is pleasant to go through the suffering, but because they produce a step-by-step -step transformation in our lives to be more like Jesus Christ. Okay? Kaya sabi doon, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character. These things produces Christ-like character in us. Now that we are in Christ, suffering is not anymore an indication that God is punishing us or being, alam yun, angry with us. Rather, suffering is now being used by God to produce that fruit in us, that character in us, to mold us into becoming more like Him. Okay? You know what? Because of this peace with God, this internal security that we now have and the verse is saying what the verse is saying is that we also go through struggles but we know that God is in the business of internally changing us again it is not how you feel on the outside it's not how you look on the outside it's about what Christ has begun inside of you the internal thing that shifted inside of you and you know what that righteousness, that holiness that is your identity right now, your standing right now, it is stage by stage being manifested, realized in your life as you walk with God, as you go through those things na sinabi kanina, yung trials and suffering, okay? That's why there is hope. We are being transformed from one degree of glory to another. True enough, this is what the following verse is saying and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame okay having peace with god gives us internal hope not just internal security but internal hope our hearts can now be fully expectant and fully anticipating of the things that god is about to do in our hearts in our lives because we are at peace with god Okay? Now, I know all of these things sound uh, good to us, but perhaps the question is, how did this happen? How did this came to be? How has all of this came to reality? And this is what the next verse is actually answering. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Okay? Having said all that, perhaps it is clear now for most of us that this peace with God is something to really be desired. Talagang, I want that. Gusto ko yan, Miko. Or for most of you na alam nyo that you are already at peace with God, you want to see it really lived out in your life. Gusto mong magkaroon ng confirmation that this is all true for you. Perhaps what we have described earlier contradicted some of what you are feeling right now. Okay? That's why we're gonna continue on and I believe to answer this question that we have, we need to understand the heart of God. How He came, how He gave this peace with Him. How this came to be. Okay? And for that, we're gonna read the next verses. Sabi dito, For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. We must remember that being at peace with God 
did not come at a free cost. It came with a price, and the price was the life of Jesus Christ. That's why he has died on the cross. The peace we have with God was purchased by the blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross. In this and the following verses, Paul exhorted that the love of God that we can experience right now by having peace with God, by receiving all of the implications na pinag-usapan natin kanina, Paul is saying that to fully grasp that, we must understand that it is based and rooted from the work that Christ has done on the cross 2,000 years ago. For us to fully appreciate this and receive this, we must believe and be convinced that this peace with God was all the work of Christ. We must take ourselves out of the picture. We have nothing to do about it at all. It's all about Jesus Christ. Okay? It's all about what Christ has done. The righteousness, the justification, the hope of being glorified in the future. This isn't something that we have earned or done to really receive and deserve. These all points to the finished work that Christ has done on the cross, has rendered for us because He loves us. How can we? That's the question. How can we? The Bible describes us as weak. The Bible really describes us as sinners who always fall short of the glory of God. We are called the enemies of God. We deserve to be called the enemies of God because we turn our backs from Him. We rebel. We betray Him with our decisions, with our acts of self-righteousness. We are saying we don't need Him. But here is Christ. Here is Jesus knowing all of that, seeing the depths of our hearts, seeing that we would never choose Him. He chose to die for us. He chose to do the first step of showing to us His love, the love of the Father, and really laying down His life so that we could be forgiven, we could be reconciled with God, and we could have this peace with God that we can fully enjoy today. That's why the idea of grace, it is so wild to the point that it is a scandal. Remember the song, The Scandal of Grace. Scandal of grace, you died in my place, so my soul will live. That is true. It's like saying that, God, this is too good to be true. You dying for a sinner like me. And you know what? This can only be true, but by the grace and love of God for us. Verse 7. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. On rare occasions would you die for your enemy or even sacrifice for your enemies. I would sacrifice myself for my family, for my friends. But for my enemies, I don't think I can make that bold commitment that when the time comes and I need to give my life for someone I know I don't have a right relationship with, I can guarantee that I would give my life for him. But here is God. Here is Jesus Christ dying while we were still God's enemies, while we were still sinners who have gone our own ways. He has already given his love for us. Okay? Christ died for his enemies, which is us. Thanks be to Christ for laying down his life for us. And also thanks be to the Father, to our God, who really motivated this plan with this love for us, with this plan of redeeming us, with this amazing grace for us. You know what? This is what motivated all of this. And the Lord Jesus Christ submitted to this. It's stated in verse 9. Since, since therefore we have now been justified by His blood, much more shall we be saved by Him from the wrath of God. Justification, it means that just as if we never sinned. It also means just as if we are the ones 
who died because we deserve death, but it was Jesus who died. The sin of the sinners was paid by the blood of the one who never sinned. Jesus Christ lived the life we should have lived and died the death we should have died. In verse 10, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. The judge justified the sinners by paying for the sin himself. We know that the judge is none other than our God. And knowing that we deserve to pay for our sins through our death, he paid the penalty of our sins by being the penalty himself through the life of Jesus Christ. And in verse 11, more than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The status of sinners as enemies of God, our former identity, our former status before God has forever changed, was forever transformed through what Jesus Christ has done, through his love and grace for us. God and man reconciled. This is the peace with God. Okay, let me just end by telling to you the story of Hiro Onoda. He is a Japanese soldier who fought during the Second World War. He was stationed in the Philippines. He was tasked with the mission of protecting a Japanese base located on a mountain at all costs. He, has, he is at that base, he is at that mountain, he, he, hasn't, he don't, don't know what's happening on the ground, he has no means of communicating with the others. But one thing he knows is his mission, to protect the base. This is what he did, he has spent years protecting the base, even after the war has officially ended in August 1945. He didn't know that the war has ended. No one can tell him that the war has ended. And... What happened was he continued on holding out on the base. He protected the base at all costs, even to the point that Filipino people, farmers, and soldiers who are coming up are being killed because he is shooting at everyone coming up, up on the mountain, even if the war has ended. And so what happened in 1974, Emperor Showa of Japan sent out a Japanese reserve official to come to him, to come to Hiro, to say that the war has officially ended and his duty has already been relieved. That is only the time that he came down the mountain knowing that the war has ended. And that is after how many years? After 29 long years. Imagine he spent his life fighting a war that has already ended. I believe that there is a spiritual parallel to this scenario, and I would like to pray for all of us in that regard. Perhaps you are that person, and uh, you have long been fighting, trying to really earn God's approval through your good works, maybe hoping to see that one day you will be given a good life if you will fight hard enough. But now upon listening to this message, you realize that the war has ended. That there's no longer need for striving, but we need to accept that peace with God, that Christ has won, that Christ has paid for us on the cross. I'd like to pray for you. Also, perhaps you have long known this war, but you see yourself still fighting really hard. You can seem to drop down your guard or your weaponry, and all of this represents your good works. You think that if you won't equip yourself with it, you won't really, on, you won't really survive in this life. But God is saying that, anak, the war has ended. The battle has been won. And you can now have peace with Him. And somehow, just like Hero, there has been a lot of casualties in you continuously fighting. It has costed you your dreams. It has costed you your relationships with your family, with your friends. It has costed you a lot of things. But the Lord is saying, Anak, you can come down the mountain. You can enjoy the life that He has given you. I would also pray for you. Okay? Can we just pray? 
if you're that person and you know that you want to have this peace with God, you don't have it yet. You don't have that relationship with God yet. And you see yourself really being tired upon battling in your lives, all on your own, trying to, trying to prove a lot of things. And you want to surrender, to wave that white flag, and to receive the news that the war has ended. And you now have peace with God. If you are that person, I would lead you into a prayer of accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay? If you are that person, you just comment down below, The war has ended. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Comment that. The war has ended. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Let me just pray for you. Father, thank you. We acknowledge that we have been sinners. We have been people who turned our backs from you. And we tried to compensate with all of that through our good works. Here we are, God, acknowledging our sinfulness before you, acknowledging that our good works are filthy as rags, and it can never make us earn salvation or receive blessings that comes from you. Here we are, saying sorry, repenting for all of our sins, and we receive Jesus as the only one who can save us from our sins, who can save us from our eternal suffering in hell, who can give us that peace with you that you have paid for on the cross through Jesus Christ. We receive this new life of living in you, in walking with you, in no longer trusting in our good works, but trusting in your grace alone for our salvation and for everything that we will need and even want in this life of ours. It's going to be based from your grace alone from here on moving forward. Help us, Lord God, to walk in you. Help us live this life honoring to you and pleasing to you. Thank you, God, for the war has ended and we can finally live, Lord God, as free men in your spirit, living by your will and by your grace. This is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'd like to pray for you if, that, if you are that second person that I have, I have talked about. You have been on the defensive and you want to say, God, let me fully receive that implications, those implications of having peace with you. Father, I pray for your people. I pray, Lord God, for all of us who are still striving, still really performing so that we would earn the good things in life. Thank you, Lord God, for your saying that the war has ended and having peace with you is more than just really being able to approach you. It also implies being able to ask you every good gifts because that is your will and that is your desire as a father to us to really give us good gifts, to really bring us to the purposes that you have for us, to the plans that you have prepared for us, to prosper us and not to harm us, a good future, a future of hope. Thank you, God, for it entails all of the things that we are actually fighting for. And now we're coming down the mountain. We're receiving your grace. We're laying down our arms. We're not gonna fight, Lord God, in our own self-effort alone. But may our good works now be motivated, Lord God, by the love that you have first given us. Salamat, Panginoon. I pray that you just free people, free your people from the performance trap, from striving and toiling, and just receive that rest that is abundant in you, knowing that you will provide for everything and anything that we will ever need in our lives. Salamat, Panginoon. And now I'd just like to pray for everyone. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your great plan at redeeming us. Thank you for your love and your amazing grace. Thank you for, it is really your plan to reconcile us once again to you through the life of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for the life that you have laid down on the cross, for the blood that you have shed so that we can be forgiven, we can be redeemed. You would purchase for us the peace that we now have with God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us into this truth today. 
I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would continue to really uh, make this more of a reality in our lives as you transform us from one degree of glory to another, as you constantly always reveal to us who you are, who God is, what you have done, and what this entails in our lives that we live right now. Salamat, Panginoon. Pinupuri ka namin at sinasamba. Pagpalain mo ang iyong mga anak. The Lord bless everyone. The Lord keep everyone. The Lord make His face shine upon everyone today and in the coming days. Salamat, Panginoon. We bless your name. This is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in this Sunday. We hope to see you again next week. And God bless everyone.